Good morning to you. It's good to be with you this morning by the stream again. I think this is about the fifth week that we have been streaming the word to you on Sunday morning. And it's a blessing to have the opportunity to do so. But also we pray that it will soon be time that we can come back and worship here in the in the house of the Lord on Sunday morning. But we are so blessed that you have chosen to be with us this morning. Please remember prayer list on, on uh, our web page. And we have a number you need to um, need to tune in and remember this week. Uh, please remember uh, love one of our family, Miss Mary Wills and her family. Miss Mary's not doing well uh, at all this week. And I'd ask you to please remember um, she and her sweet family uh, today. I read from... Uh, Matthew chapter 20 this morning, beginning in verse 29 and going to verse 34. And as they departed from Jericho, a great multitude followed them. And behold, two blind men sitting by the wayside, when they had heard that Jesus passed by, they cried out, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thy son of David. And the multitude rebuked them, because they should hold their peace. But they cried the more, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thy son of David. And Jesus stood still and called them and said, What will ye that I shall do unto you? They said unto him, Lord, that our eyes may be opened. So Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes. And immediately their eyes received sight, and they followed him. Let us pray this morning. Father, we come and sharing thy word this morning. We, we pray, Lord, that we would have eager, open hearts to hear your word this morning. Wherever this message may be streamed, may be they, those with desire to hear. And, Lord, may this word speak unto their heart in a mighty way today. We pray for our sick, uh, our troubled, our bereaved all around about us. Lord, we pray for this uh, this virus that uh, has been um, plagued this this U.S. and around the world for these uh, last months. And Lord, we pray for healing. We pray for healing of our nation, but we pray for a spiritual healing as well. Lord, that they would be those that would seek you and turn unto you and, and recognize uh, the precious and holy name of Jesus. Lord, I pray now you bless as we share from your word, for I pray in the precious, holy name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. This morning, I want to share with you on Jesus' final journey um, to Jerusalem uh, for the Passover. And the Bible tells us that Jesus passed through Jericho. Oh, I do not know, but of this one occasion that Jesus passed through Jericho, oh, for those of you that, that uh, um, study your Bibles on a regular basis, you know that Jesus met Zacchaeus uh, during this, this uh, trip in Jericho. Uh, Zacchaeus being a, a publican, a chief among the publicans, I believe the Bible says, and he openly received Jesus, and he sat up in the sycamore tree to see him as he passed by. Uh, the Bible says he openly received him. But we're speaking uh, from Matthew this morning as he uh, shares with us a picture of two blind men who saw uh, to their uh, sight to be received. Now, uh, many have called these two blind men beggars, and I, I kind of have the impression that these two men was brought unto this spot, maybe a main passageway, that they would sit maybe the entire day and uh, beg and seek for people to help them, and only would they leave when someone came to get them. As these two men, um, they were uh, one of the things that I want us to note this morning, that these two men were ready to receive the great blessing of God, which God has for all mankind, but they were ready to receive it. 
I want to share with you just a few things, and the first one being this. The first one being that these two blind men knew who Jesus was. Um, uh, 800 years before Jesus walked through the streets of Jericho, the prophet Isaiah promised that there would be a descendant of David, and God would raise up a great king. Um, um, to establish his eternal kingdom. Now, I seriously doubt that these two men understood uh, all of this, of the everlasting kingdom of Jesus. I really doubt that these two men uh, understood how Jesus would establish the church. I do not believe that they knew uh, and wouldn't have understood what Jesus was, was about. Uh, to do in Jerusalem as he went unto Jerusalem and, and he was crucified on the cross of Calvary. Nevertheless, they addressed Jesus as the son of David and they showed that they understood that Jesus was the Messiah and that Jesus was the promised king. Little knowledge maybe they had, but they knew who Jesus was. Was now these these uh um uh, I want you to know this morning that the foundational truth of Christianity is based on knowing who Jesus is and that He is Lord. I pray this morning that you know that Jesus is Lord, and upon knowing that Jesus is Lord you would know that he also is king. He came to be king of that day, and he's king of kings and lord of lords today. He still remains and will remain throughout all eternity. They they all eventually would understand whatever else God would have us to understand, but the first and basic truth to understand is that Jesus is Lord, and God will give our understanding from that point on. Um, oh, I believe that God wants you to know and to understand this, and and it's it's found uh, to be the path of a blessing life, and in that path of blessing life, um, it. it it will it will show God's grace to a heart that is prepared, and God's grace is ready to pour out unto those that accept His Son as Lord. Now I, I, I mentioned just a moment ago that Jesus is Lord, but I asked you this morning: Is Jesus your Lord? Is He my Lord? Uh, for He must be Lord of our lives. The second thought I have for you this morning is that the blind men believed that they could experience God's power in their lives. They believed. They believed. As they sat there and they cried out, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thy son of David. They believed that Jesus could meet their needs. There's many needs uh, round about. There are, are, is a great need around about. But there are those that truly believe that Jesus can still meet that need, whatever it might be. I pray that you are one of those that truly believe that Jesus can meet the need that is in your life. And they believe that Jesus could perform a great work in their lives and their faith gave room for God to do his work. Um, faith, faith, um, giving room. You, you know, I turned back in the Bible and I remembered a couple of examples that was given in the Bible. One was Gideon. Gideon uh, faced a great host. The, the book of Judges 6 and 5 said that the Midianites, they and their camels were without number as they entered into the land to destroy it. Called the Midianites. Uh, God called Gideon, uh, showed him that he, they, he had truly called him. Uh, began with 32,000 men. Um, 22,000, uh, I believe it was, went home because they had a fearful heart. 
that left 10,000. They carried them down to the stream to drink water. Those that that lifted, um, put their heads down in the stream and left his dog uh, was separated to one side. And those that took their hand and cut the water and brought it up to their mouth, but kept their eyes open unto the enemy was about 300. God took 300 men against the host of the Midianite, which was a great host. And he said unto Gideon, Arise, for the Lord hath delivered into your hands the host of the Midianite. Great blessings and victory is possible for those that have faith. I also want to mention to you this morning that these two blind men ceased the opportunity and maybe the only chance that they would have to meet Jesus. They seized the opportunity. You know, I'm just a humble servant of God. I don't I never imagined being streamed and watched on a, on Facebook. But I do believe that you may have ceased an opportunity this morning even through me, through the Word of God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, that possibly you have ceased the moment. You have ceased an opportunity. And do not let that opportunity slip through your hand. I tell you this morning, if Jesus wants to do a work in your life, I pray that if you've never accepted Jesus, that you do not um, um Ignore the opportunity that you have this very moment. If there's a great blessing that you need, this may be the very opportunity that you have to seek Jesus this morning. Uh, as far as we know, um, as I mentioned earlier, this was the only time that Jesus probably had been through Jericho. And, and, uh, if if these two men had not insisted on being where they were in the pathway that Jesus would come to, and if they had not insisted to be sure that they got the attention of Jesus, if they had not seized the moment of the opportunity, healing may not have come in their lives because they may never have had another opportunity. Many people are lost today because um, they they did not heed unto the opportunity or cease the the moment when it came. I believe that uh, uh, in the book of Acts it speaks about Mars Hill, as the apostle Paul uh, told the philosophers there, um, and they said unto him, "We will hear thee again on this matter." And to the best of our knowledge, they never heard them again. Also, a, a familiar one that we remember was about Felix. And um, he said, um, when I have a convenient season, I will get back with you on this matter. Uh, my belief is that Felix never had that convenient season. Um, uh, or there's no record of him doing so. Um, uh, for my friend the colonel uh, I read this and it says General George C. Patton once said a good plan executed now is better than a perfect plan executed next week so if you have a good plan this morning do not think that you will have the perfect plan next week cease the opportunity today uh, if you need to be saved, if you need a closer walk uh, with Jesus, uh, you need to deal uh, with that. Or if there's some sin in your life, you need to deal with it today, this moment, immediately, for you have the opportunity. And the fourth thought that I had, that these blind men refused to be discouraged. And... Um, I believe the scriptures uh, say that uh, verse 31 um, of Matthew chapter 20 says the multitude rebuked them 
because they should hold their peace. But they cried the more, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thy son of David. Did you know there was a multitude trying to discourage these two men? I can get discouraged sometime over one person. Oh, and, and here they was, a, a, a entire multitude was trying to discourage them from, from making a scene. But they continued on. They, they would refuse to be discouraged, and they insisted that they come to know Jesus. The book of Luke introduces uh, these blind men uh, as they approach the city. With Matthew says they come out of the city. Uh, one says one, and one says two. Um, I, I don't know, but I do know this: that both accounts says that they insisted upon seeing Jesus, um, and and they were not discouraged. Are you discouraged this morning because of what you hear from others? I'm not blasting the the TV screens or the news media, but if you listen to it very much, you will become very discouraged. Look unto Jesus and be encouraged instead of discouraged. For Jesus has his arms open this morning, saying, Come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And, and Jesus' arms is open for us today. I believe that um, in Hebrews 11 and 6, it said, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Oh, have mercy upon us, O son of David. They continued to cry, and they continued to cry. They diligently sought Jesus. In verse 34 says, So Jesus had compassion on them, and touched their eyes, and immediately their eyes received sight. And they followed him. The last thought that I have for you this morning, not only did they receive their sight, but they followed Jesus. You know, after receiving the sight, there was probably a lot of things that they wanted to see. A lot of things they they maybe had never seen. I do not know. But I do know this, that they did not immediately go to see all the sights. They immediately followed Jesus, because they knew that he was the one that that made their life whole again, not only from their eyes, but from their hearts. I pray that you, you have received that spiritual sight that comes from Jesus. And I pray that God will bless you. You, you insist on, on, on being close to Him. I know the churches are closed. I know that we're doing by streaming. I know that it's not the same as being in the house of the Lord. But if you insist upon the blessing of God, you may receive it. I wonder if we can close this morning. Haven't done this in the weeks that I've been here, but it, in your homes or wherever you are, if you would bow your head and if you would pray with me the Lord's Prayer, we will conclude. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May God bless you today.